questions lately about my little Nissan S Cargo, my imported Japanese van thing that I've done a couple videos on, but I haven't really talked about recently. So I decided today it was time for a little update. And I'm gonna bring you that update in the form of first a couple of performance tests and then a little review of the S Cargo, driving it on the highway first and then in the city. And so here are my performance tests and my driving review of my crazy little Nissan S Cargo. Okay, so the first test we're gonna do here is a zero to 60 test. Now, for those of you who need a little bit of a refresher, keep in mind that my S Cargo has a 1.5 liter four cylinder carbureted with only 73 horsepower, although that's not my biggest concern with these tests. My biggest concern is the fact that it's only a three speed automatic. It really wasn't designed for zero to 60 tests. Now remember the S-Cargo speedometer is in kilometers per hour, so the number we're actually going for here is 100, not 60, that's 62 miles an hour, 100 kilometers. I've got my trusty stopwatch, my old iPhone, and now we're gonna see just what this thing can do. Okay, highway on-ramp with only slight elevation should be a perfect zero to 60 proving ground for this little guy. All right, green light, we're going for it, woo! Go, little guy, 45, 60, 65, oh, we're flying, we're flying. 80 kilometers, oh, we're not flying really anymore. 90 kilometers, oh, this is bad. Oh, there we go, 100, 100. And that would be a 17.3 second zero to 60 run. That's, uh, that could be better. All right, now with zero to 60 out of the way, I'm now going to attempt a top speed run. I'm gonna do this on the interstate. Now, normally I don't advise doing a top speed run on the interstate, but it's worth noting that the S Cargo speedometer only goes up to 160 kilometers per hour, which is only 99 miles per hour. And I've had it around 120 kilometers an hour before, which is like 70, and it didn't really seem like there was a lot of juice left. So I don't think I'm running the risk of causing anything dangerous to happen here. Let's see what the S-Cargo can do. Now, to do a speed test in this thing, you don't really need that much room. You just need some room, because I really don't think I'm gonna get going a lot faster than all these other cars, although I think there's some chance I might catch them. Now, right now I'm going 110 kilometers. That's like 63, and everybody's kind of pulling away from me here, but the highway is opening up, so I think in just a second, I'm gonna drop the hammer. All right, here goes. Vroom! Come on, little guy! You got this! 120! 130! Keep in mind this is kilometers! It's okay, there's some weird sound is happening on this side. I have no idea what it is. It's maybe wind. 140! 140! Woo! 143! That's it! That's all it has! 143 kilometers an hour! Oh, what a rush as I get passed by a Nissan Murano. 143 kilometers, I gotta calculate that later, but I bet that's like 120, 100, 130 miles an hour. Yeah. Okay, so in some news that will surprise absolutely no one, the S Cargo isn't really much of a performer. Now let's find out exactly what it's like to drive this thing around on the highway and then in the city. Okay, so now that we've got the performance test done, I'm gonna try to drive it on the highway like a normal human being. Unfortunately, that's kind of hard because as you saw, it doesn't really go all that fast. So I'm sitting here in the far right lane and everyone is passing me. In terms of actual highway driving capabilities, this S Cargo is actually not as bad as you might think. It has really skinny little tires and it's very small, but it feels relatively stable. This one has been well maintained and so it doesn't have this weird suspension play or steering play. It drives how you'd expect. Unfortunately, it's really slow. It has absolutely no passing power. You hear a lot of engine, you hear a lot of wind noise, and you hear a lot of road noise. It's just sort of how it is. This car wasn't designed for this sort of driving. Now there's no tachometer 
this car, but I know it's a three-speed automatic, which means that I'm sitting at the very top of the rev range in third, top gear, uh, and it feels pretty stressed, even though I'm not even over 100 kilometers or 60 miles an hour right now. Nonetheless, it also doesn't feel like it's gonna kill me, which I think is really kind of an important characteristic. Yes, it's nice to have a little in-town runabout, but occasionally everybody has to go on the highway. And yes, it can do it, it just, it doesn't love doing it. Now, I know I haven't shot a lot of videos with this thing, so you might think that I'm neglecting it, but the truth is I actually drive it all the time. It is my go-to errand vehicle. I live in a very crowded city where parking is at a premium, and this thing is so small, I use it for just about any errand I have to run in the city. Go to the post office to pick up a big package, get a haircut, it doesn't really even matter. Go to dinner where I know there won't be spots big enough to hold my normal car. I, it's been a great little around town city car, although, as you've seen, it's not really the best for highway use. And one of the things I like most about it is the amount of windows. I just have this incredibly expansive view. In most cargo vans, and I admit that I have a hard time calling it a cargo van, you have trouble seeing to the sides, whatever, big blind spots. This thing, the greenhouse is massive. You can see everywhere. It makes it really easy to drive in a tight city with, with narrow roads and maneuverability is a big thing. The other great thing about the S cargo in a city, obviously, is that it's pretty slow on the highway, as you've seen, but in town here, that doesn't really matter. I never go above 25 or so miles an hour, and it accelerates up to normal in-town driving speed pretty easily, just like a normal car. So it's perfect for that. This thing really would be the perfect inner city delivery vehicle. It's like a Ford Transit Connect, except even smaller and even more maneuverable and even more visibility. When I'm driving it around town here, it feels like a little hatchback. But remember, I have about four feet of room between my head and the top of the ceiling. So there's a lot of space in back for stuff if you want to put it back there. It's also worth noting, it's been dead reliable. I've been gone out of town for a couple of weeks in a row here in the middle of the winter, and I keep the car in a garage, but uh, you know, it's, it's carbureted and it's old. And so you wonder, is this thing really gonna start? It starts right up every time. Haven't had a single problem with it. It really is the greatest around town conveyance. And if you want a car, you can just pop into town, pick up a few things, come home, go to Home Depot. As long as you don't need crazy large items because the glass doesn't open separately from the window and it's a normal hatchback, not a hinged door. As long as you don't need crazy large items, this thing is perfect. It's perfect for like around town delivery use. I love it, it's hilarious. So there it is, a little update on my Nissan S Cargo, which I've actually enjoyed quite a bit more than I thought I would. It's been a fun little car to drive around town, and it's been a fun little car to stare at and use to make people laugh. But I don't think I'm gonna have it too much longer. I think I'll probably do one more video with it and then move it on because it's time to make room for the next Doug car to replace the Aston Martin and live alongside the Dodge Viper. Stay tuned for that in the upcoming few weeks. It's a Nissan S Cargo. Really? I imported it from Japan. It's really weird. Uh, is it yours? Yeah. That's unfortunately. <laughs> Thank you.